Hello and welcome back to the Dundee YouTube channel. I'm David O.C. and today we're reviewing the all new Mini Electric. Now this shape Mini has been around for almost 20 years and much like its predecessor, it almost has a timeless look to it. Prices for the Mini Electric start at just over 27 and a half thousand euros. Something like this, which is the tier three, the top spec version, goes for about 35 and a half thousand euros. Now one thing to note is this does include your SEAI grant of five thousand euros and your VRT rebate. Now let's talk about the look of the electric because there is a few changes. Things like this aerodynamic grille which you can opt out of and interestingly enough these wheels. Now a fun fact about those is that these wheels originally were called the Corona spoke wheels but for obvious reasons Mini changed the name to the Power Spoke and that name has stuck ever since and they also look like a three pin socket which we actually use here in Ireland and also in the UK where the car is built in Oxford. Now one thing I really want to talk about is driving it so we're going to get right into a drive and see how she handles. So the Mini Electric has a 32.6 kilowatt battery now that is smaller than something like a Nissan Leaf or a Hyundai Kona. And now this is a similarly priced car, but it is also very, very different. And there's one very good reason for that. Now I'll talk about how economical and how to use it in the most world friendly possible manner. However, for now, I want to talk about the hooligan mode. Effectively, if you put it in sport mode, it is a whole different car. And one of the biggest stigmas with electric cars is What's gonna happen in the future to fast cars? What's gonna to happen to the hot hatch? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can now assure you the hot hatch is well and truly alive. The way this car drives, it's front wheel drive, it's got 181 or 184 brake horsepower, 270 newton meters of torque. To put that in perspective, it's not all that much less than a Ford Focus ST. It's a lot of torque and it drives sensationally. The batteries are low, so the center of gravity is low in this car. It's got a 50-50 weight distribution, and it just handles phenomenally. Yes, you're gonna run out of power eventually because you're gonna have had too much fun and you'll need to charge it, but it doesn't matter because the smile on your face. It is a Cooper S, it's badged with it, and I can 100% stand by it. It's a Cooper S. Now I'm well aware that most of you don't really care that it actually drives like a go-kart. It's got a steering wheel, it's got two pedals, and it will go where you put it. So I have to consider the fact that most of the time, the Mini Electric is gonna be driven by people who are just going out to brunch and who are driving to college or driving to work on short commutes. So we have to test it in an urban environment. The reality is most driving done by Mini owners is around town, hitting speed bumps where the suspension is actually ever so slightly too firm, but it's kind of part of the Mini. It's about getting in and out of tight spaces, using the reversing camera. And you know what? You're better to just enjoy that, embrace it, put it in to green plus mode, let the regenerative braking do its thing, and just drive and enjoy it around town. And if you do want to go for a longer journey, then get a petrol or a diesel version. All right, so let's talk about the numbers. So the Mini Electric, its standard range is claimed at 230 kilometers. Now let's call a spade a spade. That's not all that much in the electric car world. And what's worse is when I actually collected it, the range with a full charge was only showing 173 kilometers. So the big question when it comes to electric cars is how long does it take to charge? Well, the good news is being a slightly smaller battery, it actually charges faster. So for an 80% charge, you're only talking 35 minutes if you've got a fast charger. On a normal charger, then it's about three hours for 100%. And at home, you'll do 12 hours for a full charge. But in the real world, if you're not driving all that much, that's pretty spot on. Now, in the cockpit of the Mini, you gotta get nice and low to get into it. Now, it is very well built in here. The materials used are absolutely phenomenal. It has a really premium feel. It's much like the original Mini of this kind that came out in 2000, however, just better effectively. And I know that seems so simple, but it's the easiest way to describe the feel in here. It also has some nice modern touches. Actually, one thing to know is how cool 
that start noise sounds. And it is nice because in a Tesla, you kind of don't know if it's on or not. Other nice features, you've got a big eight inch screen here. You've got a digital display up here, a digital dash. It's all very modern, but still keeping its authenticity. Now this being the tier three has nice features like the Harman Kardon speakers. It has an electric powered sunroof which is so nice. A sunroof just makes you happy. I don't know what it is about it. And of course, it's got your armrest, it's got your multifunctional steering wheel, and it's good to go. Space in the rear, I must say though, is very, very limited. And being honest, you're not gonna fit that many people in there. Much like the car itself, the boot is rather mini too. 211 liters to be specific, which in comparison to something like a Volkswagen Golf, which has 380 liters, is quite small. It also doesn't have that many creature comforts. It has a 12 volt socket, which is nice and handy, and this false floor where you can hide your charging cables. But other than that, it's quite basic, and actually, sorry, it also has folding rear seats. At this point in any Dundee car review, we like to be fair and we like to be reasonable by discussing three of our favorite and least favorite things about the car we're reviewing. And number one on the list of least favorite things about the Mini Cooper Electric is the Union Jacks in the taillights, the headrests, and the dashboard. I understand it looks cool and it's part of your heritage, but in Ireland, it's a brave move. Number two is that there are very little driving aids. In fact, Traction control is about as good as you're gonna get here in the Mini Electric. There's no lane assist, there's no adaptive cruise control. It's very, very basic in that department. And last but not least is if you live in an apartment block, there's no way to actually charge your car. Now there is a bit of good news that the government is investing heavily in creating charging points in apartment blocks, but for now, it is a problem. Number one on our favorite things about the Mini Electric is that there's a little speaker inserted here and it emits a kind of sci-fi noise. As we all know, electric cars don't have very much road noise, so they've put it there in the safety of pedestrians. Number two is that it is one pedal driving. So very similarly to the Leaf, when you take your foot off the accelerator, it will regeneratively brake, but it'll do it so much to the point where we come to a complete halt. It's actually not right next, we're on a downhill, but I swear it actually does. And number three is its charm. It's an intangible thing, but compared to any other car in its price range, it just offers so much more charisma than something like the Leaf. I mean, I love the Kona, but this is better. Well, there you have it. That is Dundee's review of the Mini Electric. And after a few days driving it, it showed me that the future is bright and that electric cars at an affordable price can be fun and they will be. And hot hatches will live on. We hope you enjoyed the review. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, please subscribe. Let us know in the comments what videos and what cars you'd like to see us review next. But until then, we'll see you in the next video.